right. Hello, and thanks everyone so much for joining us today. I hope you all are having a great summer and taking some time to enjoy with friends and family. I'll just cover a few reminders while folks are still joining before we get started with the content. So first to answer the most commonly asked question that we get on every single one of these events. Yes, we are recording today's webinar and you will receive a link within the next 24 hours. So please look out for a follow-up email from our team. Um, secondly, you can join today's conversation on Twitter as well. We'll be live tweeting at Rio underscore SEO and using hashtag Rio webinar. So feel free to engage in the conversation there as well. Um, we welcome your comments and questions throughout the discussion. So you can submit any questions for our awesome panelists today through the Q&A button located on your Zoom control panel. Uh, we will try to answer as many as we can live, but if we don't get to your question, we'll be sure to follow up with you afterwards. Um, and feel free to drop any comments in the chat as well, including if you'd like, let us know where you're joining us today from. We'd love to hear. So with that, I will uh, talk a little bit about why we're here today. So my name uh, is Justin Gianni Noto. I'm the Senior Marketing Director for Rio SEO. Really excited to be here and hosting today's discussion. Um, it may feel a little strange talking about this since we're still in August, but we're bringing the holiday spirit a little bit early this year and we're here to explore some emerging, emerging marketing trends and strategies for the upcoming 2022 holiday season. And as we all know, as marketers, consumers begin their shopping earlier and earlier every year. And in fact, um, we saw a stat recently from Google that uh, as of June 2021, 31% of U.S. shoppers had already started their holiday shopping. So um, if you haven't started your shopping yet, I would encourage you, you're, you're probably late at this point already. <laughs> Uh, but that means obviously that, you know, we have to start the planning process earlier and earlier each year as well. And um, also most of the strategies that we're going to talk about today are, are very applicable to a lot of the other holidays that are coming up in the fall season as well. So without much more ado, I'd like to introduce our awesome expert panel. Today, we're lucky to be joined by Claire Carlisle, local search expert at Bright Local and chartered marketer at Claire Carlisle Marketing. And Elizabeth Rule, SEO analyst and account manager at, Ster at Sterling Sky, and Ruben Yao, VP of SEO at Vision Interactive. Thank you all so much for being here with us. And I'll have you each just go around and briefly introduce yourselves and share a little bit of your background. And Claire, maybe let's start with you, and then we'll go to Elizabeth and finally Ruben. Hello. Thank you very much for the introduction. It's very nice to be here. So, as you said, I am Claire. I am the local search expert or a local search expert at Bright Local. I'm also a chartered marketer. So I work with small and medium sized businesses and all sorts of businesses here in the UK. I'm also a faculty member at Local U. Hooray. Yay, Thanks so much, Claire. Claire. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Elizabeth Rule. I am an SEO analyst at Sterling Sky. Uh, recently just became a local U faculty member as well to join Claire in the ranks of awesome local SEO marketers. Um, a little bit about me. I've been working in local SEO for about five years now. I've been at Sterling Sky for a year um, and I am also a product expert on the Google My Business forums. So any uh, business that has issues, just head over to that forum and us product experts can help you there. Awesome. And hi, everybody. My name is Ruben Yao. I'm the VP of SEO at Vision Interactive. Um, I'm originally from England, but came to the US in 2000 to co-found a travel startup. And uh, that's how I got into SEO. So I've been doing SEO for about 22 years, something like that feels like forever. But uh, happy to be on board and looking forward to this. Thank you all. So, so excited to have you here with us today. And um, before we jump into the discussion, we always like to make this a little bit interactive. So I'm going to uh, send a poll everyone's way and uh, just would be curious to know some feedback from those joining us to see what you anticipate to be your main area of focus this holiday season in terms of your marketing strategy. So we have five options, mobile commerce, omni-channel, Google business profile, SEO, or all of the above. I'll give everyone just a few moments to put in their results. In the meantime, uh, and I did warn you guys about this, did, has anyone had the opportunity to, uh, to do any exciting travel this summer or have anything coming up? Um, the only thing I did, I went to Local U in Denver. It was my first in-person Local U event, and it was just so awesome. Like, it was the only travel thing I've done since COVID, and it was just amazing to meet so many marketers specializing in local which I personally love um, but yeah that's it for me amazing 
I didn't have the chance to go, but I heard amazing things about Local U. Yeah, it was great. I was sad not to go to that. Claire, we missed you. Hello. I was so excited to meet you when I found out you weren't going. Oh, it's devastated. Next year, next year. I, I live in um, a coastal national park, so I'm quite lucky. Uh, so we've been here, and then we also went to stay in a cabin for five nights, and that was very exciting. Very nice. I'm going to uh, back to England, back to Old Blighty in October to uh, visit my family. My father's turning 80, so we're having a big birthday party for him. So looking mm -hmm. forward to that. I haven't seen uh, my folks for a couple of years, obviously, because of COVID and travel issues. So that'll be exciting. Oh, that's fantastic. Thanks all so much for giving us a little insight into, <laughs> into your summer travel. Um, all right. Looks like we have some results here. So I will go ahead and share those. It looks like actually Omnichannel, um, not surprisingly, as we've seen a ton <laughs> related to Omnichannel in the, this year, especially and in the past few years with, with the pandemic as well. So um, Omnichannel, as well as all of, the, all of the above, obviously, you know, mobile commerce, SEO, GBP, those, those will always have their, their fair place and their fair share of attention in holiday marketing as well. So thanks everyone so much for participating. Really appreciate it. And without any more ado, let's get into the discussion. So um, we're going to cover all of those topics today and more. Um, we're going to start off by talking a little bit about um, some multi-channel and omni-channel. So many brick and mortar retailers have developed options for selling and order taking online uh, during the pandemic, as I said, has accelerated even, even more greatly. Um, even as concerns about COVID have lessened in 2022, buy online, pick up in store, contactless payment and pickup, other multi-channel service experiences um, are becoming much more prevalent. So uh, Elizabeth, maybe we'll start with you on this one. How, how can businesses help consumers move more effortlessly from one touch point to the next, um, knowing that you know they're likely going to complete their conversion at maybe a physical location when they're starting their experience online? Yeah. Um, how can they kind of navigate that? Yeah. So I think one of the most important aspects of that is to understand what the audience on the channel you're targeting is looking for. So say you're on social media and you're just casually browsing through your friends' photos, maybe you're taking a look at um, different things they've bought over the holiday season, you're not necessarily going to make a purchase right at that point. And in this um, situation, you're expecting the customer to make a purchase in store. So don't be too salesy to them at um, that time they're on social media because we'll kind of come off as um, a little bit rough. Um, they're not going to maybe want to come in store and make a purchase later if you're too salesy online. Um, so make sure they understand things like when you're open, um, maybe when you have time or you have someone available to answer their questions in store, give them the information they want to actually come in to your location. Um, to make that purchase instead of trying to just force them to make a purchase online. Oh. And then same thing with your website too. Make sure you have everything on the website for the customer to understand um, where you're located, when you're open, what products you have in store to make their um, conversion in store a lot easier. Makes a ton of sense. Give, give the consumer the most control over their experience as possible. Yeah, exactly. Great, great insight there. Um, and you know, keeping in line with with thinking of this in a customer experience lens, uh, many brands are also experiencing supply chain shortages, which has been ongoing really the last year or two. Um, and while this may be inevitable and and tough for us from a marketing perspective to to mitigate a little bit, um, it is important to as much as possible try to mitigate those roadblocks for consumers. So, um, Ruben, any any tips from your end on how brands might be able to get ahead of those types of challenges from a marketing standpoint? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that the SEO function um, is always challenged with and uh, really needs to be good at is networking within organizations. And whether you're in-house or whether you're at an agency uh, working with clients, um, trying to get ahead of the holiday season is, is um, definitely a huge priority for you. And one of the big ways that you can do that is to try and get connected with the merchants, the actual buyers because they've got a handle on um, what SKUs that they're already ordering. I mean, we're at the end of August now, so most likely the orders have already been placed. They're just waiting for the containers to arrive. So um, understanding what they've got planned, uh, what products are going to be superseded, uh, which ones are going to be added to the store as well. 
uh, which obviously they need a presence online. Now, most likely the SKU, because it hasn't arrived yet, the SKUs haven't been set up in the system. You don't know what the final URLs are. So all of your traditional sort of SEO tasks are going to be, you're going to try and prep for them, but you don't have all of the details yet. Um, so just understanding what that cadence is of when all of those products are going to come in. Um, and then also be aware that um, when we get into the shopping season, the inventory is going to be in different states. Uh, and what I mean by that is some of it will be in stock, some of it will be sold out, others will be on back order or awaiting arrival. Um, and there's many other sort of different states uh, within sort of the, the fulfillment um, process. So understanding that and trying to make sure that the website can clearly communicate the state of that product. So if it is on back order, um, make sure that that's really uh, called out that it's different than just sold out. And if you do have the back order uh, notification capability where you can sign up for updates, either via you know, email or SMS, those are always uh, really good to have. Um, and then some other things to be aware of as well is depending upon the platform you use for the website, um, it may only be configured to show items that are specifically in stock at the store. So those items, sometimes you have situations where uh, once an item is sold out, it disappears from the website. Uh, even though the merchant has purchased more of those and they're just in transit waiting to arrive at the store, they won't appear on the website potentially, depending on the CMS. So that can cause SEO headaches uh, because now you've got SKUs that on, they're on the website, they disappear, they come back, they get superseded. So just understanding what the plat how the platform operates and functions uh, is going to help you, uh, you know, put workarounds in place or maybe make changes to the platform. And I think lastly is um, be very upfront with the way that you communicate the product availability to the audience. Um, there's nothing more infuriating that when you're in this hyper excited state of shopping season and you're looking for these products and you get vague or misleading messaging about availability uh it's very frustrating as a as a shopper and you know we're talking about omnichannel and mobile your competitors are just a, a click or a tap away so just be up front and make sure that everybody's uh clued into when the next um you know back order is scheduled is it two weeks is it six weeks um, I, I think those are probably my, my top tips. That's all excellent, excellent insight, Ruben. Thank you. And I, I know, you know, we talked a little bit at, at the top about consumers shopping earlier and earlier. And I saw another stat from Google that over 50% of US shoppers said they would start shopping earlier this year to avoid items being out of stock. But obviously can't rely too much on that. There's always gonna be myself included, those people that wait until the last minute. So, uh, yeah, I was actually looking at Google Trends uh, uh, the other day for specifically Black Friday. And over the past few years, the search volume has really spiked, um, you know, right at the, the beginning of November. But um, mm. it seems like the past couple of years, the activity started to shift a little bit earlier, a couple of weeks earlier. So that means you have to get all of your Black Friday deals and all of that content up online a little bit earlier. Absolutely. Uh, were you gonna were you gonna jump in there, Elizabeth? Oh no, I was just agreeing. Yeah. <laughs> all fantastic. Yeah, no, I I love the concept also of the SEO team working really closely with the merchandising team to really be in sync there. Uh, that's that's all fantastic. Thank you. Um, Shifting gears just a little bit, but you know, just as important. Obviously, Google Business Profile, um, extremely important throughout this this shopping journey, especially in the holiday season. It's typically the first interaction customers might have with your business um, as your digital storefront. So, um, Claire, I'm curious to hear uh, your thoughts on any opportunities for businesses to showcase holiday promotions, hours, and and other things on Google. Oh yeah, so loads of opportunities in uh, GBP, GMB, whatever we want to call it this week. Um, so making sure, you know, seasonality 
it's that thing where your Google business profile needs to reflect what's important to you as a business and what's important to your customers. So once you've got it all set up, then you need to think about, OK, well, now I need to change stuff around uh, ready to reflect what you know, what are, what are the top questions like the Q&A uh, portion? What do I want to drive to the top? OK, you've got your um, seasonal offers, which are great. There's actually um, a separate tab for offers that can appear on a mobile. So making sure that those are uh, first and foremost, if you think just basically you want everything, your photos, your business description, you can change everything around just to push that seasonal edge. Um, another thing is thinking about your search queries and what you are hoping to target. And then thinking about the fact that uh, reviews, posts, offers, um, what else on, on page content on your website, all of those things can be pulled in as justifications. So make sure that you're using the keywords that you would like to be reflected in your justifications in your business profile. So most of all, just keeping it up to date and making sure that it reflects, um, you know, your key messages. That's that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, similar message that we that we share all year round, right? But even more critical in, in, in the holiday season. And I think your point around photos too, they've become much, much more of a signal to consumers as they look at your profile and a huge opportunity, I think, there mm -hmm. for brands. Yeah, so making sure that your posts have got new photos, basically everything needs to be brought to the top. So you need to treat treat it like it's a, it's your website, it's your it's a CMS basically, but you need to know which buttons to press to 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 make things appear. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I think you know the the profile photo on many stores just remains the same year in year out. And so if we're going into a shopping season and if you have a store where you do something unique for the decor outside or there's, you know, the town that you're in or the street has specific decor, then try and get those uh, that photo updated so it's seasonal. And I would also recommend hiring a professional photographer to make sure that you get the best quality photo. Um, the cell phone photos, you can stand outside and take the photo. The cell phones <laughs> cameras are great, uh, but it's not the same as a professional photo. So a little bit, a little bit of investment there um, is, is, I think, really, really well worth it. Because when we look at some of the statistics on how many times business profiles are viewed versus how many clicks that people take on um, visit website, get directions, or uh, the tap to call, Typically, what we see on our client base is uh, of all of the views, only 5% result in some sort of action. So what that means is most people, like 95% of the views, are people looking at your profile and then potentially making a decision based upon what they see in Google on whether they're going to visit your store or not. So they're not even visiting your website. So that means their entire experience and the showcase of your brand is your Google profile. So it really has to be um, uh, as, as top quality as, as you can get. And the photo is obviously the one that stands out from the sea of text uh, on the page. So I'm a really big proponent, as you can probably tell, uh, of getting really good product photography and store photos on, online. Absolutely. Very critical. I think more and more brands are starting to realize that. Great points there. Um, switching gears just a little bit, I want to make sure we focus on, you know, some other channels and opportunities for brands as well. So thinking a little bit about paid opportunities this season, um, you know, there's been a pretty sharp increase in ad prices this year, you know, in some cases jumping 20 or 40 percent. Um, that's definitely impacting retailers' ability to reach as many consumers that way. So, Elizabeth, should retailers consider budgeting for ads this holiday season? And if so, you know, what considerations would you make or should brands focus potentially on other channels such as organic? Absolutely. So I think brands should always be budgeting for paid ads, especially with the SERPs looking like they do now. Ads are always at the top, never going away, taking up so much real estate above the fold. It's kind of hard to get away from doing ads. That said, I think you should always be focusing on SEO and ads. SEO is really that long-term strategy that's going to allow your business to flourish over across many holiday seasons. Paid ads are a great way um, to get your 
brand at the top of the page right then and there when you want it to for a specific keyword. Um, that said, ad prices are going up. And one of the reasons I think ad prices are going up personally is because Google is trying to shift merchants to use automated bidding strategies, which are typically much cheaper than if you're running a manual bid strategy, say um, cost per click or enhanced cost per click. Um, there's a new campaign type that Google's really pushing right now called Performance Max, and it's a completely automated campaign that's going to automate your bid strategies. So that's how much you pay at the auction um, on a keyword. Um, it's going to automate your text ads, your image ads. Um, it'll make a video for you if you don't have a video. I recommend creating videos um, for your business, though, to put there. And it will also automate which um, network you're on. So it's going to be search network, display network, Gmail, YouTube. Um, any network that Google owns where they can show ads, this campaign type can show your ads there. Um, and it's very scary for merchants and local businesses right now to use this campaign because it gives Google complete control over virtually everything. But it is, from what I've seen, and candidly, I've seen it in lead gen campaigns mostly because that's what I run as a local marketer. Um, I've seen much lower cost per clicks and much lower um, CPAs, cost per acquisition um, for those leads. And typically they are quality leads. So trying to utilize the tools that Google gives you to automate your bidding, automate your ads um, will allow you to lower your cost per acquisition, your cost per click too. But you have to make sure you're feeding it the conversions that you want it to um, optimize for. So if you're tracking leads, making sure you have all your calls, all your contact forms tracking in Google Ads accurately will allow the system to optimize for you. If you don't have that conversion tracking, and in this case for e-commerce, that's going to be sales. If that's not tracking correctly, the system will not work for you. So that's a pain point I see a lot is that the merchant, the local business does not have conversions tracking correctly. And therefore the system is just optimizing for clicks, optimizing for views, optimizing for um, a click to call. So it's not really the system isn't working. It's just, we're not allowing it to work for us, for our needs. So that's my recommendation is to look into how you can get automated bidding working for you. It's going to mean a lot less time and effort on your end and hopefully more conversions at a cheaper cost. Definitely. And I, I, I totally agree with you. Paid is definitely not going away as a strategy, but a lot of opportunities there for brands to at least maximize the spend. And as, as Ruben mentioned earlier as well, you know, zero click search is definitely on the rise continually. So yeah, it kind of leads into the next question pretty nicely, you know, for something that brands have a little bit more control over, how can brands maximize their local pages and product pages to best promote their holiday specials and deals so that when consumers do land on their pages, they have the best chance of, of converting them? Uh, Ruben, I think we'll go to you on this one. Sure. So obviously we need to make sure all of the essential, the core essentials of the, the contact information is correct in sync with Google. Um, you know, during the COVID times, uh, Google put a message on the profile saying, you know, we can't be certain that the uh, the hours are correct. So, you know, double check with the business. So we know that sometimes not every store or a business owner goes into their profile to make sure that everything is up to date. But that's definitely essential on making sure that they're both in sync, because sometimes people will click from the profile to the actual local page or the location page, just to double check hours availability and directions and things like that. So I think um, making sure that you also have a link back from your location page to the Google profile is also important. We need that two way. Uh, some people aren't going to get to your location page just from the profile. They're gonna go through the actual store locator uh, on the website to get to the location page, and then they're going to need direction. So making sure all of that's functioning uh, and being tracked. Um, list all of the hours and holiday closures in an easy to read format. Uh, sometimes a lot of the, the uh, location pages I see, they have shorthand uh, with abbreviations, and it just makes it just a little bit more difficult to read um, and scan. Um, 
you can show nearby stores as well. Um, you know, during the holiday season, people are visiting family and friends, and they might not be wanting to research the store that's no, their local store, but maybe it's good for them to know that, hey, um, at my in-laws that, for instance, they live about 10 minutes away from me, knowing that there's a, a store that's close to them, I'm going to be at, you know, at their house uh, on Thanksgiving because they love to host. Um, so that, that's good information for me. And then I think from an infrastructure standpoint, we know there's going to be a peak traffic. We know that things are going to change. So um, make sure that your web hosting is set up. And if you're on a cloud service where you can kind of turn up the dial uh, to increase resources, that's always definitely something to, uh, to consider as well. Yes, it's an increased cost, but you need those pages to be available uh, and also speedy. And then I think the other thing, if you have um, any of those uh, notification forms or any kind of user interaction and that the uh, functionality like that, uh, email signups and things, test them, make sure they work. Uh, very often those things are set up, they're tested when they're developed and put on the site through various updates, uh, site updates, things can break along the way. So you might need to step up your testing schedule um, you know, if you test once every six months or once every month, do it every week or every day, depending on how critical that is uh, for your business. And then um, content updates for the actual site itself. So we've got, we've mentioned about store photos and things like that on the profile. We need to make sure we've got fresh photos as well on the location page. Uh, we don't want to see store layouts showing old product that's no longer available. So again, we've got to keep that content um, fresh. Uh, we also, if possible, want to localize that content. So if I have a store in Arizona and it's part of a national chain, I don't necessarily want to be promoting winter coats across the chain. <laughs> and now I've got winter coats showing up on Arizona, the Arizona store. So where we can try to localize it, I know that can be challenging um, depending on the IT infrastructure, but uh, that's always, um, preferable because when people go to that store location page, that is essentially their homepage or the start of their journey for your brand. So they don't necessarily care about what the specials are in other parts of the country. Um, the representation of your brand to that audience is through that location page very often. Um, if you have um, links to, or if you have pages that are set up for um, Black Friday deals or specials, or if you have bundles, uh, discounts, uh, volume discounts or closeouts or any of those kinds of pricing initiatives, make sure you link to those. Those will be great for conversions. It drives engagement. Um, and uh, it also, from an SEO standpoint, drives a lot of links to those pages. And we need to make sure that those pages get updated and indexed and have uh, all of the great signals. And then if you've got any lost leaders, I think uh, that that was a good thing to get people into the store. Make sure you understand, again, you work with the merchants. You understand what are those products that people just can't resist and they need to visit the store in order to, to get that, you know, that, that lost leader. But then you're going to be relying upon them purchasing the other higher margin uh, products to make up the revenue. So I'll, I'll kind of pause there and kick it over to the rest of the team here. Any other thoughts on local pages? I feel like we can do an entire webinar just on this topic. <laughs> oh, it covered so much good stuff there. And anything else anyone would like to add there? I think being uh, Elizabeth, after you. No, oh, no, go ahead, Claire. I'm I'm <laughs> listening. I think being consistent with your messaging, we've already mentioned offers and we've talked about omnichannel, but if you're talking about something on your Google business profile, you need to make sure that that's reflected mm -hmm. on your local landing page. I think that making sure that you covering the different ways your business has pivoted in terms of product or service delivery, um, what else on there, just basically keeping it as fresh and interesting and actually reflecting how the business is, how it functions, what is happening, the staff that are there. Because um, I, I feel like location pages are sort of seen as the what's in a, in a, a more appropriate way to say something I was going to say the the, the the lost 
the unloved, uh, the unloved children of a website. The headed stepchild. Yeah. Yes, there we are. So that, I tried not to say that. So uh, yeah. yeah, the unloved child. Right. So you need, right. you need to, you need, like, you know, you need to put a lot of love and make sure that they reflect what is happening in store. Yeah. Love it. Um, and I, you know, I, I love the point too, Ruben, that you made around the local page be really being the homepage for the, the consumer in that area. And obviously we, you know, we recommend pushing down promotions and offers from the brand level to the local page, but obviously make sure that they make sense for, for that, for that person in that region. So great, great tips there all around. Um, and Claire, I, you know, I wanted to dig into that a little bit more too, in terms of driving traffic and, and more in line with that from an SEO perspective. Um, do you have any any um, recommendations for on-page SEO to kind of highlight some of those holiday promotions, whether it's or health and safety attributes that could potentially help drive some additional in-store or e-commerce traffic? I think it depends what page you're talking about, but generally using those words on the page is the thing that we need to do because it's uh, we have to do that because otherwise Google and people don't know that's what that page is about. So um, I don't know if we're talking about, do you mean sort of product level, category level pages, or are you talking location pages? I was thinking mainly location pages, but yeah, either. And, and, and just pivot back to what you just said. What was the, what was the first part about that that you just Any said? So mainly and thinking about, you know, with holiday promotions specifically. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Just the, just your standard on page, you know, this is your location page, so, but you exactly. need to think about, like, like we do with anything that we write, we need to think about all of the different parts that we need to optimize on that page to make sure that it's perfectly optimized. And again, it's seasonal. So that location page, you might need to tweak your title tags, your H1s, blah, 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 all those sorts of things, depending on what you're trying to attract during that time. But also it's... Um, Ruben was talking about trends. You, you've got to think about zeitgeist. You've got to think about what are the rising terms, different ways people have of um, describing things. So, you know, in-store, curbside, all of those different terms that came about partly because of, of COVID, um, people, people describe things differently. And it's making sure that you are using those words actually actively on the page rather than taking it as read that, this is what I offer, therefore I will rank for this. Well, you, you won't if you don't actually use those terms. Absolutely. Elizabeth, were you, were you jumping in there? Yeah, I definitely agree with everything Claire is saying. And I think one thing to look at too is what kind of SERP comes up for those target keywords and products that you're looking to show up for. So yes, it's great you have them on the page, but does a map pack show up? for some of those keywords that your customers are searching for. If so, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the local page or whatever page that your GBP links to is also optimized for those keywords because that's how you're gonna help your GBP listing show up in the map pack is whatever page it links to is also optimized for those keywords. Um, because as we know, when the map pack shows up, it takes up a ton of real estate on the SERP. So you might not get organic traffic for a lot of your money keywords, and it might be because you're not showing up in the map pack. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, kind of furthering that along those lines, those unbranded search terms, obviously being so critical, um, you know, uh, before customers familiar with your brand, or if they're not looking for a specific brand, they may search for generic terms like Christmas gifts for teenagers or holiday shopping deals near me. So, you know, Ruben, do you have any, any thoughts on how brands can better optimize their local pages for some of those unbranded search terms? Yeah, I think there's, there's a couple of things we need to make sure. And obviously, from a location page standpoint, we can't represent the entire SKU catalog on that one page. That's not feasible. Um, so, you know, we, I, I talked a little bit about linking out to some of those special deals pages, whether it's Black Friday or closures or whatnot, um, link out to the specific categories or, or the departments uh, and make sure you have intro copy and maybe highlight just a couple sample or your top products from each of those. Um, again, you need that connection with the merchandising team to understand what are the priorities, um, not just for the chain, but maybe for that region or for that specific store. Um, and then if you have the ability to also justify the, uh, the category pages, you might also want to think about um, not just having the location page, but a localized department or vertical page. Um, so you can optimize that for 
whatever product category in Phoenix, Arizona, or whatever your um, locations are. And then that gives you a dedicated page to really expand upon that. And once you have that page available, you can go into much more detail on the available products within that category, related products, and all of the natural language that's just going to appear on that page as part of talking about that group is going to uh, help you optimize for that. Excellent, excellent. Um, I, I think we can also <laughs> probably do an entire other discussion just on the SEO components as well. But I, I did want to make sure we touch on this uh, last question. Well, we have a few minutes left. Um, we've talked a lot about omni-channel, you know, toward the top, but we haven't really focused specifically on mobile. And um, according to some research that we pulled, um, insider intelligence, retail mobile commerce sales grew over 15% last year, uh, over $359 billion. And in the U.S., mobile commerce is expected to nearly double its share of total retail sales in the next five years. So your brand should really fully expect uh, that this mobile commerce experience is going to be a core part of the way that consumers are going to interact with your brand. Um, Elizabeth, uh, how can brands best optimize for these mobile commerce opportunities? Yeah, I think the first step is making sure you understand your own mobile experience that your customers are experiencing because I know I'm guilty of it, not looking at the mobile version of a website nearly enough when I'm optimizing it um, for SEO or paid. So I think merchants, local business owners should always make sure that they're up to date on the experience their customers are going through when using their mobile site, especially if there's a mobile checkout section. Like are buttons big enough for people to click? Um, can people fully view the products in the viewport or is the text large enough? Um, are there any stopping points, pain points along the checkout journey or the conversion journey that customers are falling off at? And can you make those pain points a little easier for them, specifically on mobile? Um, and then also understanding to where users are um, if they're not on your website, what other websites are they on on mobile that you should be looking into? Um, for instance, TikTok. Um, right now, that's only on mobile devices, and it's a huge um, aspect of the buying and purchasing decision for customers right now, especially yeah. millennials and Gen Z and younger. So if your customers or your target audience is leaning more towards those um, online only social media platforms, then you should definitely look into being on there as well. I think we saw a stat on that as well. Uh, ad revenue on TikTok is going to rise almost 200% this year. So a lot of spend being devoted to TikTok for Good sure. For TikTok. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any, any additional thoughts as we round up that question or potentially from a listing standpoint as well in terms of op optimizing for mobile? Uh, and the, the thing that I would say, listings, everything looks nicer on a mobile. I think Google Business Profile was made for mobile, wasn't it? Because everyone had an awful um, website. Uh, so I think that's why it looked so attractive is because it was made to be viewed. It's very clicky. It's quite gamified almost. Um, just at the, the services tab is only actually shows on a mobile. Your services don't show on a desktop. So it's just worth thinking. We've got no way of actually knowing how people consume or if they consume that content at all, because you can't link, you can't UTM tag anything in there at all. So um, yeah, a lot of people are going to be viewing your listing on a mobile. And just following on from what Elizabeth said about checking across devices, you can obviously look in um, analytics to see what are the main devices that people are consuming your content with. Um, and if you can actually get hold of a real telephone and check on those, then that's that's a good idea because using a um, like a simulator, it's it it's not really the real experience. So definitely check across the types of devices um, that your target market and that your users are using. Absolutely great. Wouldn't, great it, wouldn't it be nice if, because we know there's a lot of activity that happens on Google business profiles that we have no idea about. Wouldn't it be nice if in Google Analytics 4, there was a Google business profiles stream <laughs> That would actually give us all of that data so we could mine oh, that. Wow. That'd be awesome, right? If, if yeah. Google's listening. It, yeah, right. It would be nice to know a lot of things, wouldn't it? But yeah, yep. that's, that's definitely one of them. 
I will definitely plus one to that idea, Ruben. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, well, I think we're we're running up toward the top of the time that we have for today, but I'll, I want to make sure everyone has a chance to give kind of just final parting thoughts. Um, and so I'll kind of do a little bit of a roundtable here. Maybe we'll go Claire, Ruben, and then Elizabeth. Um, any final thoughts that you'd like to leave our, our audience with for today's discussion? I think we've covered a lot of great stuff, but uh, anything that's top of mind as we... As uh, we just off the top of my head, it would be something like be joined up. So whatever your messaging is, whether that's offers, whether it's in-store stuff, whatever it is, keep it joined up um, and make it make sense across all the different touch points and channels. Awesome. Ruben? Uh, I think making sure that everything is up to date and localized, as we've already discussed. Uh, and then one thing to also be aware of is the code freezes. Make sure that you're aware of when that's going to occur. Uh, and then also be aware that IT or the web development team is going to be crammed uh, with trying to pour 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag, right? To try and get it ready. So you might need to work on or help them prioritize uh, what are the best recommendations. And maybe you can't get the perfect SEO recommendation um, implemented because it's going to take too many resources. So if there's a alternative that's going to get you 80% of the way there, maybe that's good enough for the business. Excellent. And lastly, ben Elizabeth. Yeah. Uh, kind of playing off Claire's point, make sure that you're all joined up on the platforms that your users are actually on. So you may really love Facebook and you may be on it all the time, but if your users, your target audience customers are not on Facebook and they're on say Instagram, they're using search a lot more, you wanna make sure that your information, um, including your business hours, um, your products, um, offers, any services you offer special during the holiday season are on those platforms because your customers are not gonna hunt for your information. They're going to expect it to be where they, the information to be where they are at the time they're there on that platform. So just make sure they're not doing a lot of the heavy lifting to find the information they want about your business um, and just put it right there in front of their face when they want it. Love it. Love it. Very well said. And you know, I, I'll throw one final stat out there as we look to wrap up. Um, we, you know, we had pulled another one that talked about consumers looking on Google, I think it was about 65% are looking not just for, for specific gifts or shopping, but just for discovery and inspiration. So I think we touched on this, but from a content perspective, TikTok is obviously a fantastic opportunity there. But just for brands to think about not necessarily merchandising and products, but also how they can kind of give, you know, meet that need for consumers as well and, and give them some ideas and inspiration. So just want to once again thank um, all of our panelists. That is all the time, unfortunately, we have for today. But I hope um, you found the discussion to be informative and actionable. And I know I'm already a little bit more in the holiday spirit than I was before this webinar. So uh, I better get my, my shopping started early. Um, but I want to give a special thank you to our panelists, Claire, Elizabeth, and Ruben, for sharing your time and insight with us today. Um, would you all like to throw out your Twitter handle or where, wherever people can best reach you? Claire Carlisle on Twitter. That's where I live. Awesome. Yep. I'm at Own Your Surf on Twitter. No, I'm at, at Ruben Yao on Twitter. Great. Well, feel free to reach out to our panelists or directly to us with any uh, following questions. And as I mentioned at the top, we will be sending out a recording within the next 24 hours. Um, we also put out an ebook earlier this month that covers a lot of what we talked about today. So feel free to go and check that out as well. Um, if you did ask a question that we didn't have a chance to get to, we will make sure to follow up with you afterwards or feel free to reach us at hello at rioseo.com. Um, you'll see also just a very brief survey once the webinar wraps up. And we really appreciate that feedback. If you can take 30 seconds to fill that out, it helps us continue to make these discussions as valuable as possible. Um, we hope host these conversations every single month. Uh, so hope to see everyone on the next one. Until then, um, hope everyone has a great rest of the week. And thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, Justin. Bye, everyone.